This week, vaping gentrification continues as PMI buys Victoria Pharmaceuticals. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape. 20 on Friday, Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 9th of July, 2021. Yeah, you heard that right. This week, the gentrification of vaping went into high gear. So I have 20 articles you need to know about. This guy is a lunatic. What does he actually think? I have time for 20 news articles? We live in a 60-second soundbite now, not an encyclopedia. Chill out, cabron. I'm not a bendejo. I'm not an arsehole. The format's been changed, all right? Ain't nothing to it but to get into it. Like I said in the opening bit, the gentrification of vaping continues as Philip Morris marches along with their exit strategy. Last week, they bought out Fernton Farmer for 5.1 billion Danish krone, or eight. $113.1 million. Well, this week, PMI bought out UK-based Vectora for 1.05 billion pounds, or $1.44 billion. And if you're not familiar with Vectora, they are a pharmaceutical company that specializes in bringing inhaled medicines to market. From pharmaceutical research to formulation and device platform development, Vectra is inhaling device technology epitomized. And now it's owned by PMI. If this isn't gentrification of vaping, I don't know what is. Moving on to Italy, because PMI isn't a mom and pop operation, their exit strategy also simultaneously is playing out in Rome, where PMI recruits Eurospees, the Institute for Political, Social, and Economic Studies, to ensure a self-regulation code for the distribution and production chain of products without combustion. Hmm, isn't that what the mom and pop vape industry have been trying to say all along? But regulations are inevitable. I mean, politicians need to profit on prohibition or regulatory taxes. Anyway, that doesn't take away from the fact Smoking has a crazy cost associated with use. And no surprise there, considering it's the leading cause of preventable death across the globe. But that fact does not change smokers' behavior. Smokers know the risks, but they smoke anyway. Well, until one day when they realize that smoking's really taking a toll on their body, and maybe it might be a good idea to stop. You know, these patterns are consistent. And yet, organizations and entities continue to study it only to find the exact same results that others have already found. Well, Eurospees found 30.5% of smokers don't want to quit. 26% say that they'd like to quit, but they don't think that they can. These numbers are globally similar no matter where you look. And the fact is, the global number of smokers has not significantly changed. When one government legislates it out of existence, it just grows a black market. It doesn't stop people from wanting to smoke. And if you don't believe me, just take a look at Panama, where the government taxed it to oblivion, thinking that they were practically banning it. Did it stop the smokers? Nope. No, but it did create a black market 80% of the cigarettes consumed in Panama come from the black market, but people continue to smoke them. Excessive taxation and prohibition does not work. And these guys know it. 91% of Italian smokers cannot quit smoking. That's 10 million people stuck on the smoking highway with no off-ramp, except they do have an off-ramp. It's called the electronic cigarette. And the electronic cigarette is 637% more effective to quit smoking than nicotine replacement therapy. Well, the truth is beginning to see the light of day. And you can thank Philip Morris International 
for breaking the demagoguery of political opportunists. Yeah, they're doing it for their own self-interest. But you know what? If it's good for public health, then I'm all for it. Bloomberg is killing people with his prohibitionist mentality. And now the unlikeliest of allies for the vape industry is evening the keel. Moving on. Moving on to Russia, where the debate is just now heating up about vaping. First up is an editorial response titled, How are pods different from vapes? Well, essentially, there is no difference. A vape is a vape. Big or small, they all work the same way. Liquid is made up of VG, PG, flavorings, and nicotine. If you choose to consume it, and that liquid is heated to an aerosol state. And if you breathe that vapor in, instead of smoke from combustion, it is healthier for you. This is not rocket science, people. Well, the ants must always point out, this isn't 100% safe. So here's an editorial that focuses on the experimental rats exposed to misused vape devices. And it tells readers that they had breathing problems and wheezing. And they're also going to talk about a volley, which has nothing to do with nicotine vaping. You want to know how to get rats to experience breathing problems and wheezing? Here, let me show you. Let me show you how these labs got the, la the rats to experience wheezing and breathing problems. And I can't believe I'm going to ruin a perfectly wicked blotto for this nonsense. But here we go. Here's exactly how they went about and sent all these noxious gases to the rats to make them have breathing problems. Look, we're going to set this thing at 200 watts. You see that? And we're just going to light it on fire. There you go. Those are noxious fumes. And I guarantee you they're going to make anybody have wheezing and shortness of breath if you breathe that stuff in. That is how they made these rats have wheezing and coughing problems. And there's science to prove it. Make any living being breathe in that combustion, and I guarantee that they're going to have breathing problems. You want to know the truth? In this article, by the same website, the department head of epidemiology and tumor prevention of the Blockin National Medical Research Center of Oncology and corresponding member of the Russian Academy of Sciences, David Zardes, said the approach to regulating alternative products should be balanced. Nobody says that they're totally harmless, but they are much less harmful than cigarettes when used appropriately. And studies show that electronic cigarettes are effective in quitting smoking. End discussion. Moving on. Moving on to Maori tobacco control researcher, who says that there is moral panic being whipped up about youth vaping. But the bigger dangers are being completely ignored, like booze. The latest study shows 24% of 15 to 17 year old kids binge drink weekly. Whereas less than 8% of kids try to vape and only 2% of kids used vapes on a daily basis. And this is coming from a researcher who's well aware of the disproportionate number of Maori who smoke. The Maori smoking rate is twice that of the non-Maori people. I'm not kidding you. This is something like 40% of the Maori smoke compared to the non-Maori. It's like twice as much. It's almost like looking at the truckers, the number of truckers who smoke. The rate of their smoking is astronomical when you compare it to other members of society or society as a whole. But we'll get to that later because it's time for a public service announcement. If you are on a flight and you took your vape with you, 
Do not use it until you are in a designated vaping area. Why? Well, police in Cook Islands reported Travers behaving badly are going to be dealt with swiftly. One visitor learned this the hard way after the police confiscated his vape right on the tarmac. In fact, use of your cell phone, obviously smoking, and also vaping is prohibited on the tarmac. So if you're traveling to the Cook Islands from Australia or from any other location once it's allowed, wait a couple extra minutes. Or don't be surprised if the police use you as a shiny example of their diligent work. And if you're in Cook Islands, don't be surprised if they post your arrest on their Facebook page so that you can be their shiny example of a badly behaving traveler that they had to take care of. Moving on, once again, I'm going to remind you of the vapingfacts.health.nz website. This website is filled with facts and information and backed by leading health authorities in the region. I'm also going to briefly mention smokefree.org.nz and their countdown to Smoke Free New Zealand 2025. It's not about banning smoking. It's about taking action against tobacco so that by 2025, hardly anybody is going to be smoking. Despite all their efforts, and while overall smoking rates have been declining, the rates among Maori and Pacific peoples have been increasing. Maori women have among the highest cancer rates in the world. So it's no wonder that they're going to do everything possible to embrace harm reduction and save as many lives as possible. Speaking of Pacific people, let's take a look at Hawaii, where Governor Ige vetoed House Bill 1296, which would have repealed the Hawaii Tobacco Prevention and Control Trust Fund to fill budget shortfalls. He said removing this long-term funding arrangement for tobacco prevention programs could result in negating public health impacts and higher health care costs. He would also eliminate the University of Hawaii's Cancer Center's ability to conduct research and cancer center operations with cigarette tax money. Over the last 20 years, these programs have reduced health care expenditures by over $1 billion. Now imagine how much health care costs could be reduced if their Tobacco Control and Prevention Trust Fund supplied vapes to smokers who wanted to quit smoking. Wait a minute, they're not going to do that because if smokers quit smoking, they won't be supplying money for cancer research because they won't get cancer anymore. But maybe that's a good thing and worthy of losing the income from these smokers who quit. Surely the healthcare savings would more than offset the decline in tobacco taxes, right? It's not like all the smokers are going to quit. We already talked about the data on that. And if that's not enough savings to justify advocating for harm reduction, then just legalize marijuana, like Illinois did. And Hawaii could become independently wealthy on marijuana taxes. Here, let me show you exactly what I mean. Illinois sells record number of marijuana products in June, raking in 115574741 million dollars and 27 cents in recreational cannabis sales. If this trend in sales growth continues, Illinois could see more than $1 billion in adult use marijuana sales by the end of 2021. This is more tax money than alcohol brought in for the entire state. Don't feel bad, Hawaii, because Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers is getting tired of hearing about these sales figures too. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzkett just won't stop joking around about it. It's now a monthly joke between these two governors. And with a tax rate of 25%, it's no wonder the weed is flying off the shelves. Decriminalizing weed has expunged more than 500,000 convictions and pardoned those who were low-level users corralled by the judicial system. Now the only thing to argue about in Illinois is the lack of diversity among the business owners in this industry. Maybe the state should increase the number of licenses in impacted communities. I mean, it's only fair now 
Weed is legal in the neighborhoods where low and moderate income residents returning from jail are going. So shouldn't they also have the opportunity to sell this product and make some money off of it? Talk about economic revival. Restore, reinvest, and renew program. Who would have thunk it? Unlike what the White House is trying to do, the White House is classifying cannabis retailers right alongside smoke shops and vape shops. Yeah, lump them all together because that makes perfect sense. The White House is recommending changes to the business categories that would reclassify cannabis retail stores alongside smoke shops. It's the NAICS update to reclassify cannabis retail stores into a new category with tobacco, electronic cigarette stores, and smoke shops. If these guys actually understood vaping, they would classify e-cigarette stores with pharmacies or health clinics, not smoke shops, but whatever. Moving on to Utah, where their state health department is following the lead from Canada and adopting a nicotine cap of 3% to protect the kids. <laughs> the ants are marching around saying lower nicotine is going to mean fewer kids are getting hooked. Guess this health department hasn't seen the latest data about kids' use of nicotine. Kids don't get hooked on nicotine unless they have a predisposing genetic makeup or a health condition that seeks self-medication. Ignore science, once again, in the name of youth prevention. Red vapes and advocates, you were right, man. What they do in Canada, they do here next. Is this going to change what's going on with kids? No, that does not work at all. But it means adults will now have to buy more vapes or combine patches with vapes if they want to quit smoking. The 3% proposed rule, if it's approved, is going to go into effect in mid to late September, right when the FDA is supposed to complete the submitted PMTAs. Go figure. Moving on to Malaysia, where Nasty Worldwide aims to be Malaysia's first unicorn company. Domestically, our vape market has always been one of the strongest in the world, and Malaysian brands led by Nasty have been trendsetters across the globe. With the full support of the government, we could really turn Malaysia into a major player in the global economic nicotine delivery system landscape. Imagine all the potential revenue, new jobs, technology transfer, and foreign investment that has gone unrealized for the past few years. Now is the perfect time to make the right decision, said Nasty founder Sarifuddin Bujang. Nasty is trying to compete with the likes of Relics and claims that they are not far off from where Relics International was right before their IPO. It's going to be interesting to see what the end's landscape looks like a year from now. Who's going to be the big players in the vape industry? Regardless of who are the big players, I guarantee you the lawyers are going to be hunting them down just like they did Jewel. I mean, think about it. Jewel just coughed up millions of dollars to settle a lawsuit. It's just a matter of time before Relics, or whoever is the next top seller, gets the attention of some ambulance chaser looking for some easy money. Anyway, Nasty is promoting their fix. Fix is the next generation disposable vape pen targeted at helping smokers quit in the most convenient way possible. It is intuitive and no instructions are required. Any smoker will be able to adapt to using Fix quickly, and it can easily tune their consumption preferences thanks to the AirFlix Airflow Adjuster. And that's not it. Nasty is taking a page from Vaporesso and launching NCARE customer loyalty platform in the next coming weeks. I wonder if they're going to supply food and water like Vaporesso did. Or are they just looking to send coupons every month like Marlboro does? Moving on to Canada, where the Prince Edward Island Lung Association is pleased with the new Prince Edward Island's nicotine cap. Nicotine cap comes into effect July 23rd and limits nicotine concentrations to 2% or less a.k.a. 20 milligrams per milliliter. What a tool this lady is. So smug and proud of how many adults she just forced into smoking more or vaping more in the name of youth prevention. Maybe if this mom spent as much time with her kids as she spends advocating 
to limit nicotine, maybe her kids wouldn't pick up a vape. Or maybe she wants her kids to start smoking instead of using a safer product. I don't know how this lady can sleep at night. Prohibition does not work. Exorbitant taxes do not work. Fortunately, somebody in New Zealand understands these fundamental truths. Despite the Treasury feeling a 47.8% decline in tobacco duty from last year, they are not raising tobacco taxes. Guess they don't want to be like Panama, where increasing taxes and regulation only created an 80% black market. Maybe one day these politicians are going to realize these tax hikes disproportionately impact the most vulnerable of society. Moving on to the UK, where Edinburgh vaping firm VPZ takes wraps off first vape clinic to take the place of NHS stop smoking services and local support groups that were wiped out by the COVID lockdowns. I'm so mad at the UK for not designating vape shops as an essential services during the lockdown. Not doing so drove 600,000 people back to smoking cigarettes. But we'll get to that in a minute because VPZ needs to be commended for their, hold on, hold on. I have to read this word for word. We are so confident in the success of our new services that we are offering our customers a money back guarantee if they are unable to make the switch entirely. Now that's headline news. Imagine if the pharmaceutical industry had to legally offer that same guarantee for their products. Would Chantix still exist? Would Nicorette? Would Zyban? Would cancer treatment? Guess there's no money in actually curing people of their ailments. Just in keeping them a lifelong customer of drugs. They kind of help. Until it's time to take the next pill. Moving on to science. Because that topic could easily devolve into an all-day rant of modern American health care. So what does science have to say about smoking this week? Well, smokers know the serious health risks, but they light up another cigarette anyway. I know I did. 95% of smokers know smoking is going to cause a heart attack or cardiovascular disease for them. And 30% of them plan on never quitting their habit. But it's not really that simple, is it? Despite what some health experts would like you to believe, it's not about the nicotine. Nicotine by itself cannot addict anyone regardless of the dose. Science has proven this many times over. Just take a look at the NRT studies that were published and presented to the marketplace when they wanted to move those things in front of the pharmaceutical counter. But now that science is totally ignored, just like the real additives in cigarettes. But it's ignored because actually focusing on the real additives placed in cigarettes and then eliminating them would mean that all these organizations would have no purpose and cease to exist. Did you know that there are antidepressants in cigarettes? Do you know there's additives in cigarettes that numb your airway? Do you know there's additives in cigarettes which actually cause the addiction and it's not the nicotine? But we'll get to that next week because it's time to look at laundryandcleaningnews.com for their science article about workplace smoking. A 2020 study called Quit Smoking for Mental Health asked ex-smokers what their companies could have done to actually help them quit smoking. 30% said a ban on smoking at work would have helped them. 32% said greater support in funding for smoking cessation tools would have helped. But almost 40% of ex-smokers said... Allowing vaping while banning smoking would have definitely encouraged them to quit smoking earlier. And you know what? 34% of current smokers said that they would try quitting with vaping if workplace banned smoking, but allowed them to vape at work. You know, if you truly want to help smokers give up the smoking, you need to encourage them with praise and productive policies, not prohibition, or worse, the repeated tongue lashing. One improves mental health, the other one destroys mental health. Let alone their physical health, which they already know smoking damages. Everyone will eventually stop smoking, but it won't happen without harm reduction. Actually, everyone eventually stops smoking no matter what. 
It's just a matter of how much of their human rights you steal from them before they do. But what about the children? What about little Timmy and little Tina? We've got to protect the children. You know what? We can discourage teen vaping and accept the benefits of electronic cigarettes. And that's what's the title of our last article for today by Cameron English, published in the American Council on Science and Health. There's a point at which judicious public health advocacy devolves into ideological activism that actually does more harm than good. That's where we find ourselves in the world today. Oh, but flavored vapes appeal to my teenager. Yeah? So does the dessert menu at your local restaurant. Are you also going to argue that chocolate sin cake or warm apple crumb tart is turning your teenager into a diabetic? Or if your kid is a diabetic, does that mean that this restaurant needs to stop serving all its consumers delicious desserts because your kid can't have any of it? Of course not, because that kind of demand is completely nonsensical. Multiple scientific studies have proven that adults need flavors to quit smoking. And without these delectable flavors, they're going to continue to smoke until they die. So given the data, does it not make sense that these products aren't there to entice children? But in fact, they must be available to get adults to stop smoking? It's common sense, people. How many ex-smokers need to stand up and say that it was the flavors that got them to stop smoking before these zealots embrace harm reduction's potential to save lives? Just because something tastes good does not mean that it's marketed for kids. There are literally millions of flavored alcohol products consumed every day, and new ones introduced on the market continually. There's flavored alcohol ice cream sold all over the place. Are you going to ban ice cream because it's a flavor that appeals to your kid? Never! So stop the outrageous crucifixion of flavored vaping products because I know you don't have a problem with the cherry flavored nicotine sprays on the bottom shelf at your local grocery store. So one last thing before we wrap up for today, for those of you in Australia where the government now requires you to have a prescription to vape, you have to have your prescription for nicotine before October 1st or be subject to a massive fine when they catch you. Go get one if you don't already have it. On July 1st, Medicare rebates become available for video phone consultations with any doctor. It doesn't have to be your GP. So go get your script to vape. If you don't have a clue who to go see, I would highly recommend you go see the best doctor in the world, according to Vapor Man, and that doctor's Colin Mendelson. And if you don't know about Vapor Man, go check out his YouTube channel. And while you're there, watch the interview he did with Colin Mendelson, the world's best doctor. Well, that wraps up the news, science, and advocacy for the 9th of July, 2021. I hope you like this format for the weekly vaping news. It takes a lot more time to produce, but if you guys like it, I'll continue to do it this way. Comment your thoughts below and let me know what you think. Please and thank you. I appreciate every single one of you who stick around to the end. So please be good to each other and have a fantastic weekend.